Hello guys, in this section, we are going to be breaking down the entire retrieval augmented system and looking at each of the components so that we can see what exactly is going on, right? So I'm going to be using the same example that we saw in the last section. And as you can see up here, we start with a few hundred PDFs or basically just like a lot of text documents that are private, right? So we'll be doing something called chunking right here. Okay, so we'll be learning terminologies like embeddings, vector store and how the retriever works right here. So once you understand how all of these individual pieces come together to form the entire RAG system, the actual coding aspect itself is actually kind of a cakewalk and it's very simple. All right. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to split this section into two different parts. Okay. So in the first part, we're going to go over this first process right here, which is going to basically take a huge amount of private text in this case, a lot of documents and then make it go through several processes and finally save that in a very special type of a database called a vector database. And once we're done with that, in the second part of the section, we're going to be seeing how a user can ask a question. Okay, something like, let's say, what are the company's policies on remote work, right? And then this component called the retriever retrieves only the relevant parts from these documents. Okay, so once the retriever has both the relevant parts from the document, plus the user's question as well, it sends both of that, both of that information to the LLM so that it can give an accurate, well-informed answer. So this was a very quick glance on the entire RAGS workflow. Let's actually deep dive into the first section of this workflow where we're going to be converting all of these documents and text into a certain format and store all of that in the vector store, right? All right. So in the flowchart, you can see that there is a PDF that is insanely big, right? So in other words, this is uh, 10 million tokens long. So if you do not know what tokens are, let's first understand that, right? So what is a token? So in the context of language models, a token is a unit of text that the model processes. Okay. So tokens, uh, tokens can be as short as one character or as long as one word, depending on the language and the structure of the text. For example, the word hello is one token, while the phrase I am is typically broken down into two tokens, I and M, right? So tokens are crucial because LLMs have a limit on how many tokens they can handle at once, often referred to as the context window. So this means that if we have a PDF that's 10 million tokens long, we cannot feed it to the model in one go. Okay, why? Let's look at actually, let's actually look at the context windows of different popular models out there. So GPT 3.5 uh, Turbo, which is the model that you get access to on your free ChatGPT version, right? In this free version, you can only send 16,000 tokens at any given time, right? GPT-4 though is somewhere around 1,30,000 tokens, right? And Google's Gemini right here is at the highest at 1 million tokens. But in our example though, we have one PDF or several PDFs, it could be anything, worth 10 million tokens. Right. So it is uh, impossible to dump all of that and ask a question to the LLM. Right. It will complain that it's too long. Right. And it's not a scalable solution either, because think about it right now. Yeah, maybe Google's Gemini has the context window so that you can dump all your private documents and ask a question on top of it. You can do that maybe. But let's say in the future, your document size grows. Right. And Google's Gemini's context window might remain the same. So it is not really a scalable solution, right? This is exactly why in the RAGS system, we are going to be putting all that text documents through a process called chunking, which is going to be step two, right? So let's see what chunking is. Okay. Chunking is a process where we can split big documents into several smaller chunks. And you can see here that, you know, each chunk is worth thousand tokens, right? So if each chunk is worth 1000 tokens, then uh, you can do some simple mathematics in your head and uh, you, we can probably say that we now have 10,000 chunks, right? Because 10,000 chunks into 1000 tokens each is going to be 1 million. Again, we're just chunking it because we cannot dump all these large files into ChatGPT. But if we make smaller chunks and based on the user prompt, this component the retriever which we'll get to in a second. Okay. So this retriever, what it will do is it will go query only those relevant chunks based on the user's prompt and then pass it to the model along with the user prompt. Okay. So by doing this, we can pass in not just one or two chunks, but actually a lot of chunks, right? 
if each chunk is like uh, 1000 tokens and uh, the free version of chatgpt even ha- accepts like 16000 right so we can pass in like 12 13 14 different chunks and in addition to the user's prompt which could be one or two tokens right i mean not one or two but 1000 or 2000 tokens right so yeah we also have a lot of room for the users question as well about those chunks so this way we will have some more room for the users question as well about those chunks right so we now know that we sort of break everything down into several chunks but what exactly is a chunk what does it have right so if you're wondering basically they're just plain text right so if you imagine this to be a 500 page book and we also know that each chunk can only have 1000 tokens then each chunk can be thought of as just like four to five lines or a small paragraph like this right and the next chunk is going to be the next four to five lines so it's a continuation the ordering is maintained as well right all right so uh, so we've chunked it what next so so far we've just taken a huge text split it into chunks now our next goal is to extract only the chunks that are relevant to the user prompt collect only those particular chunks and then send it to the model along with the prompt so that's what we got to do second right so we have to ask ourselves a question how can we actually query only the chunks that are relevant okay after all we can't just brute force uh, search and check for exact words that match with a prompt right that's kind of like an old school dumb way of doing things right we need to be collecting the chunks based on meaning not the exact word itself and this is where the concept of embeddings and vector databases come into play it lets us search for chunks semantically or in other words based on meaning and not look for exact words or letters so in the next section we're just going to quickly take a detour uh, look at what embeddings and vector databases are and then come back to this particular rags all right so i'll see you there